Hello everyone, Dave here, and today I continue the Varimrex discussion on how old concepts from director Tetsuya Nomura's Dream Project Versus 13 can influence Kingdom Hearts, its potential future, or perhaps a standalone spin-off that can become something more. Last time I talked about the concept of Noctis' dreams, an idea that was underused in Final Fantasy XV, and how it returned in Kingdom Hearts 3, specifically its remind scenario. Today I'm gonna go a little deeper and talk about Versus 13 as a whole. Every that is known officially, though I might throw a few leaks here and there, uh, that I think hold some relevance. Talk about some Nomura interviews that led to project being cancelled and reworking to Final Fantasy XV, and even dispel a few myths people have about this whole thing. For starters, when there is a talk about Versus 13, and this happens like in 90% of the times, people tend to talk about the things they heard from others on the matter. Things like Namuro was the only reason the game was cancelled, and things like Noctis in Versus was a lot edgier than Noctis from 15. This is what I like to call get your information right. Now you may ask why I'm qualified enough to talk on the matter considering the majority of people don't know what they're talking about. And to support my case, uh, I can bring up things that I know that said 90% of people never even heard of. Which is by the way official or something data miners found in 15 that relates to Versus. For example, how many of you knew that much like Final Fantasy XIII, there used to be a PS2 prototype of Versus XIII? Or how many of you know that Nomura actually talked about the characters like Noctis and gave a description for him? Or even the fact that Airship was a thing in Versus, and Nomura and his team actually finished it to some extent. So maybe I don't know all the things that went behind the scenes, but with a bit of research I was able to get guesses of what was going on and today we'll talk about what happened with Versus XIII. For starters, we need to go back to 2005, when Square was starting their work on Final Fantasy XIII, or rather Fable and Old Crystallis. A mirror based around Final Fantasy XIII that shares universe with two other games, Final Fantasy Agera XIII and Final Fantasy vs XIII. Agera XIII was a model title that then shifted to PSP, directed by Hajime Tabata, which had a name change everywhere outside of Japan into Type-0, after Final Fantasy XIII's shared universe idea started to fall apart and Versus 13 directed by Tetsuya Nomura, with every available genius at the square at the time, though his team was way smaller in numbers. As I mentioned before, development Versus started for PS2. There is not much information about PS2 prototype, but we do have these photos that have bored with a bunch of screenshots from that version of the game. Here you can see how they are testing party AI, some more concept art, and, and a few areas that were made most likely for testing. Soon the development shifted to PS3 with Square's then new Crystal Tunnels engine, and what a legend this engine became for all the wrong reasons. But before we talk about Crystal Tunnels involvement with all this, let's talk about EA3 2006, when Final Fantasy XIII and its counterpart games were revealed to the public. Now, at this point in development, Nomura really had nothing much to show in terms of gameplay of the game. The game was in the very early stages of development, still in pre-production, but a lot of ideas and plot points were already decided. So Nomura got guys at Advent Children, and with help from Yoko Shimamura, they made those very famous vs 13 trailers. However, the trailer they showed at EA3 that year was not the most commonly known one where Noctis is killing people, but actually the beginning of that trailer, which again, not many people know that even exists. And aside from showing the city of Insomnia showing the full scene of Noctis waking up and walking outside, this trailer gave a simple summary of what the story in Versus 13 is all about. An isolated nation protected by ancient line of kings. A modern civilization alive with the crystal song of swords and sorcery. A lone kingdom fighting to forestall the other world from imposing its heretic order, the struggle for the final crystal is a merely a prologue for chronicles of a new era. As you can see, just based on this summary, you can see how things changed during 15's development. Now, after Year 3, Versus went quiet for a good while. We eventually got the two other CGI trailers, but aside from that and some developer interviews, there wasn't much to show in terms of gameplay, and there was a good reason for that. This is what I call Square Enix tumbling on Legos that they themselves dropped on the floor. Remember Crystal Tools engine I mentioned? Well, let's talk about it! When Final Fantasy XIII's development was in its last pre-production phase and getting ready to enter the development phase, the devs ended up running on a huge problem with Crystal Tools engine, so much so that they had to redo all the assets for the game multiple times, because the engine didn't want to work with them. In fact, they made so many assets for the game that they could use them for another game 
game altogether. The development of Final Fantasy XIII hit a wall so big that Square had to get a lot of their staff who have been working on other projects to help with development of XIII. As you may guess, Nomura with his team were one of those people. Now this meant Nomura and his team had to work on some other project instead of their own. As a matter of fact, in Nomura's case, you can add 8 other projects on his table, since at the time he was working on 10 projects, 4 of which he was directing. And if you want to know how he felt about that, just read the Kingdom Hearts Ultimanias from that period. He's so tired in there. And this is also the turning point for Nomura regarding the verses. Because when he started the project, it was gonna be one game. But after the development of 13, Nomura would end up having some new ideas. Anyway, in 2008, Nomura confirmed that Versus was put on hold because they were helping out with the development of Final Fantasy XIII. It's also around this time Square started to think about rebranding Versus XIII as Final Fantasy XV, as confirmed by Nomura in 2013 Polygon interview. According to Nomura, the project got big enough for it to become a mainline title. It was also around this time we got the meeting scene where Noctis meets Stella which probably was from very early versions of the game, as you can see there is nobody else at this party other than Noct and Stella. Alright, so development of Final Fantasy XIII ended up going very well. It would come out to praise from Japan and big outrage from Western players. But nobody can deny the fact that Final Fantasy XIII, due to the fact they got almost every talent that Square at the time to work on it, is still to this day one of the most polished Square games, regardless how most of the players feel about the game itself. Now what about Versus XIII? With finishing of XIII's development, the development of Versus should have continued. Well, it did, but first there were some changes. While we don't know the details of these changes and how they would affect the first early draft of Versus script, we do know that Nomura's plans for Versus ended up going from one spin-off to a trilogy of games. And this is the point a lot of people like to say Nomura went bonkers with his ideas on his own. But in reality, most of Nomura's team were with him on expanding the project. If you read the interviews, he describes it in a way that people on his team were just as passionate about the Versus as he was. Then again, the project was in development for such a long time, people got really burned out. Another big change versus had was change of the engine. As I mentioned before, Versus and Agita 13 were going to use Final Fantasy 13's engine, but since the development ended up hitting a wall and they had two years to finish the game, the engine ended up being made specifically for Final Fantasy 13. Now, it's not known if it was Nomura who convinced Square to change the engine, or if the higher-ups decided that themselves, but Crystal Tools was dropped in favor of a custom-made engine. However, according to Nomura, they were still using Crystal Tools on rendering graphics in real time, and they also started using early version of Luminous engine for lighting. Later in 2010, it was confirmed by Namura that the scenario of the game, the story, and the script were finished. So yeah, that's another myth of the window. However, some new problems arise, and because of that, the game still hasn't entered full production. What problems, you may ask? Well, Nomura didn't mention it, but it's really not that hard to guess. Obviously, it was around this time Square released the original Final Fantasy XIV. And... Do I even have to continue? It was a nightmare for Square at the time, one they would be still recovering from in 2018. They lost a huge amount of money due to the higher-ups forcing the development team to create the game on Crystal Tilt's engine, which again was created specifically for 13, and not wanting to delay the game, probably thinking it would work out some way. In the end, the company president ended up making a public apology, and Naoki Yoshida ended up stepping up as the director, and literally burning the vanilla version of Final Fantasy. Fantasy 14 and making it from scratch on Luminous Engine all over again. Obviously, all of this ended up happening at the cost of budget from other projects, including Versus. And no more along with everyone else at the Square ended up helping out Yoshida to remake Final Fantasy 14. The development of Versus continued, however, but some changes were still being made to the game. For example, characters' hairstyle and their outfits. But it was actually no more himself who requested for a clothing brand to redesign the characters. And as he mentioned many times, the design Noctis wears in the trailers was a placeholder, and the one he wears in the final game is the real one. Another year has passed, and boom! Versus 13, 2011 trailer. Noctis Oji? Noctis Oji? Are. Hakuruk this ne? まるで占領されたみたいだな。うん。<笑><笑> 
Obviously, Versus team made an amazing progress in one year under this condition. And from this point on, we would think the game was in full production, right? Well, no. In fact, at this point, Versus went silent for another year. There were a few reasons for that. First, Nomar and his team were too busy helping with 14, which got its re-release in 2013 under the name Realm Reborn. And the second reason was the time that was already lost. It's already 2012. Nomar and his team missed an entire generation, so obviously releasing the game for PS3 at this point would have been unprofitable. And with that, the PS3 era of Versus 13 ended up being cancelled, along with work Nomar and his team have done at the time. However, Things didn't look too bleak at the time. For Square was not ready to completely scrap so many years of work by Nomura and his team, which brings us to the last stop in development of Versus 13. The 2013 Yet 3. Noctis sama mo, hikari ga mieren desu ne. Ore ga nani o shitte iru no ka, ore jishin mo shiranai n da.私は行かなくてはなりません。忘れることなんかできないさ。私のことなど気にせず自由に生きてください。疑いなく信じていた世界は常に変化し、今終わる。こうでなければならないなどというものは本来このようにない。どうした食べないのか美味しくないよでもそんなことを言うな料理人が仕事を失うんだよロシスの血は根絶やしにすればいいなんだか面倒くさいことになってきたな<笑><笑> the development of Final Fantasy XV to move along quicker, Hajime Tabata and his team joined the Versus team, and this is where Tabata became co-director of the project, even though he and his team didn't really want to work on it. At first things seemed to go well. Nomura even was assured about the way they would go about Final Fantasy XV. He would talk about how the game will have a conclusive ending, but it will still continue in form of episodic DLC, that none of the story is going to change, and that there would even be a Final Fantasy XV too. So at this point the direction of the game hasn't changed and everything was going according to Nomura's plan. However, a new big change has happened at Square Enix. The former CEO Yoichi Wada stepped down from his position and Yosuke Matsuda took over as CEO. And Matsuda had a different plan on how to move the Square Enix as a company, a decision that would affect Final Fantasy XV big time. In December of 2013, it was revealed that Hajime Tabata became director of Final Fantasy XV. With Nora being a candidate for director of Final Fantasy VII Remake, a project Square was trying to do for a while now due to fans' request, and the development of another anticipated title, Cage 3. Nora was removed from Final Fantasy XV's development. Later that year, Nora had another interview, and all the confidence that he had earlier that year were gone. When asked what will happen to Final Fantasy XV's potential sequel, Nora stated, it's still not decided. Our final nail in the coffin was the announcement of Yoshinori Kitase would no longer be working on 15 either, and the scenario that Kazushige Nojima wrote has been changed. Meaning the versus epic Nomura was striving to create all these years was beginning to fade away. From this point on, Final Fantasy XV would become something that no longer represented Nomura's original vision, details about him mentioned in interviews. Versus was going to be dark, it was going to be different from other Final Fantasy games in the sense that Nomura wanted to tackle real problems of our world, and bring every disgusting and dark side of humanity to the forefront of the story. Naturally, it still had Final Fantasy in it, like the crystals, the concept of Chosen One and other things you could see in Final Fantasy, but he was going a bit of a new direction. As I mentioned in interviews, it felt like he was making Final Fantasy VII all over again. 
This would be a good place to start talking about the interviews with Namura and the information about the game and his world. First of all, versus in the name has two meanings. It means turn around and against, and there is a reason for that. Almost like another side, another story. Things you would expect to see in typical Final Fantasy game were also present in the game. While Versus has gone for more of a dark tone, it was still a Final Fantasy game at heart. Obviously this part of the Versus concept was more or less transferred into Final Fantasy XV. There's also gonna be, in a way, an anniversary title, in the sense that there would be a lot of callbacks to, or references to old games. Again, more or less transferred in the final game. When it comes to characters, Nora only talked about a few of them in detail. And here we're gonna break another myth surrounding this game, Noctis. A lot of people like to believe he was some edgy, dark, cool guy that was very different from Noctis in Final Game, but that's not really the case. When asked about Noctis, now I'll give a short description of him. He's a royal family prince and heir to the throne. His name in Latin means Light of Night Sky. He's not a dark character and laughs at things, usually with his friends, but he has an enigmatic face and a whole lot of mystery surrounding him. He's a shy character to strangers and don't talk too much, but he is pretty confident man and sometimes he let us show. His hair color along with the eye color will change when using his powers. The actual color of his eyes are blue. He has the ability to manipulate a lot of weapons at once, due to the crystal power he receives at being his protector. The only most important adornment Nox will use is ring on his right hand, and it plays a central role in the story of the game. He has the ability to see the light from the dead, and doesn't like to talk about it very much. It brings him bad memories. So, as you can see, Nomura's description of Noctis is not that far off from the final game. In fact, if we take a look at another interview where he was asked about Noctis, he said, Honestly, his inside personality isn't very cool. Judging by his appearance, he may look that way, but he's actually quite the weirdo. So the myth about Noctis being a completely different character in Nomura's vision can be called busted. And it's not like Hajime Taba is trying to avoid questions about Noctis, when he was asked about this matter, he said he tried to keep Noctis as close to Nomura's vision as possible. So there you have it. But you may ask, Dave, hey, you can see Noctis from Final Game murder people left and right like in that trailer. But there's one thing you should understand. Versus on 15 had a different story. For a long time, I couldn't understand what Tabata meant when he said he tried to simplify the story of Versus. The game's story is messy. It has three plot points happening at the same time and none of them acknowledge one another. But after digging a little, I started to see the full picture. Stuff like Chosen One, the Crystal, Nephilim, and Attack on Insomnia, and Noctis and his friends fighting against them, all of that was gonna be in Versus. But here is where Final Fantasy XV and Versus start to go astray from one another. Again, World of Versus was based on our real world and our real world problems. Nomura's vision was to explore the dark side of humanity. Obviously, none of this was in Final Fantasy XV. So the quote Tabata? Everything that was shown would be part of 15. Obviously, a lot of what made Versus Versus was cut. Some stuff we know, and then some other stuff we can't even imagine. And this is where Noctis acting differently in the trailer and 15 comes into play. There is no reason for Noctis to break anyone's neck or fight Nephilim soldiers near the Citadel. None of that happened in Final Fantasy 15. And with the story and the tone of the game changing along with the plot points, Noctis' role in what he was going to do was obviously changed as well. All stuff like revenge or him saying he will murder Nephilim soldiers for what they did no longer had its place in the new story in the tone. Character itself, personality and defining traits didn't change that much. Aside from stuff like eyes that see the light of expiring souls or moments in the story itself, as well as his involvement in it. As for the trailer itself, here's what Nomura had to say on the matter. Don't be fooled by the dark mood in the trailers lead you to. What you've seen is merely a representation of what's to come. I can disclose that character Noctis is not solitary or dark even though the burden he carries is very heavy. This basically means Noctis was not gonna be crying under the rain 24-7 in this game. Again, Versus was dark, so much so no more was unsure it was fitting for a Final Fantasy game. And the only reason he could get away with it was because it was spin-off. But it was not gonna be ridiculously painful to watch. Heck, if you just watch the meeting scene and compare it to anything from Final Fantasy XV, you will have your answer where or how Noctis was changed in XV. So yeah, that's what Nomura had to say about Noctis. What about others then? Obviously like Luna, Stella was from Fluret family. She converses in a very soft and polite way, generally going to point at hand. She doesn't take things too seriously, but she will learn along the way that things are not the way we want. Stella can see the light just like Noctis, and is more open about talking about it. She turns against Noctis and bros for her known reason. So yeah, we can already see some differences from Luna. 
I would say they were two pretty different characters, not sure how much in terms of story, but obviously she was not an oracle and was a lot different than Luna as a character. And here's another thing about Versus that's going against what we've seen 15. When talking about bros, he mentions that they are not a bunch who bear the fate they are given and are dead set to the fight. Obviously, it was the complete opposite in 15, where everybody was trying to fulfill their destiny. Now, when it came to world, here's what we know. It had different culture. But it had advanced technology blessed and protected by crystal. Everything that was outside of insomnia was referred to as outside world. Unlike 15, there used to be more than one crystal. But those crystals ended up being destroyed, and because of that, the world outside of Lucius fell to ruin, which we can see in the short TGS trailer, where Noctis is running around. If you take a look at it, it's a far cry from everything in Final Fantasy XV. And unlike XV, there used to be other nations other than Lucius and Niflheim. A quarter was in XV, yes, but it was heavily cut down in size. If you look at some of the early maps of the game, you will see that you used to be able to travel in a Kodo region on car. It was cut in size due to the lack of time. Funny enough, if you look closely on the map of the game where the road ends, you can still see where the original road that led to a Kodo region was. Aside from Makoto, there was Tenebrae, which you don't even get to explore, again, lack of time, and Nation of Solheim, which got turned into an ancient civilization from which Niflheim originated in 15. Obviously, there were no longer crystals for any other nation, so they just had heavy firearms. As far as Lucis goes, while it was advanced, the costumes and the rules were still from Middle Ages which more or less was transferred pretty well in 15. The Lucis Crystal was protected from generation to generation and eventually fell onto Noctis. Obviously, Niflheim attacked Lucis to get the last crystal for themselves. The cities themselves are based around Venice and Tokyo. No more else I mentioned they made villages so big that even they themselves were surprised by their size. Obviously, this was cut from 15. It was gonna be a dark and sad story, where characters had to carry on with their burden. Even though their path is full of pain, flashes of happiness is important in a world ravaged by greed and despair. As far as gameplay and the world to explore was, it was kind of a bit similar to 2D Final Fantasies, but in bigger scope. You had an airship you could travel with, ironic enough it was finished and you could fly around with it. Obviously you couldn't traverse mountains. It was gonna be a lot bigger than what 15 world map was, again, lack of time. Sometimes battle would take place in a lot of intense vertical places, and we can see this in 2013 trail. And also there was gonna be a huge amount of detail to environment and interactivity with it. For example, climbing ladders, which again can be seen in 2013 trailer. Nomar also mentions in the interviews that when he first came out with the plot, it wasn't as dark and sad as it ended up being. It was actually Yoshinori Kitase who suggested to make it even more sad and dark. Speaking of Kitase, he mentioned how people would be crying for days because of the story. Of course, Nomar jumps in and says they will balance it out and obviously they didn't want to turn it into a complete drama. Nomar also commented on Somnus. He and Yoko Shimamura spent a few weeks making the song, and every time they would find a way to make it even more sad. Somnus itself means sleep, and tune revolves around it in the situations we see every day. He also mentioned it has a relation to log of the game, which has Goddess Etro sleeping. Nomura also mentioned that the royal arms were scattered around the world, and you had to go and look for them if you wanted to have all the weapons. Obviously, it's translated into Final Fantasy XV. In fact, a lot of concepts and ideas from Nomura were reused for Final Fantasy XV, like summons. Obviously, they were not gods at this point, but you were supposed to fight each summon before you could use them. Much like mostly in Final Fantasy XV. <coughs> Lack of time. <coughs> Other stuff like when and how Noctis met Bros is basically the same as in XV. What else is there? Characters also can use magic only because Noctis is around. Also, there were more party members, and you were able to select who to take with you around the middle part of the game. Nomura also mentioned that the style of Versus was more closer to his heart than Kingdom Hearts. He describes it as Kingdom Hearts is a world full of happiness, light, and magic. But he spent too much time in that world, and he needs to try something darker. Which he describes is not very appealing to mainstream audience who want their fantasy world to be happy. Now, let's talk about some of the leaks and rumors about Versus. I'm not gonna mention most of them, mostly because a lot of it is just trolling, and funny enough, a lot of people actually believe some of these rumors are actually true. A few of the most famous rumors revolve around Stella. One of the rumors says that she gets killed by Noctis in the beginning of the game, but Noctis doesn't remember it until the end of the game. Another rumor suggests that she was dead from the start, and only Noctis could see her. But as you could have guessed from Nora's interview, it doesn't sound that's the case. 
Not to mention we have concept art from Versus 13 by Roberto Ferrari that shows Stella hanging out with Gentiana. Actually, since I mentioned our man Roberto, let's talk about his relation to all of this. He was the main concept art designer for Versus 13 after a previous designer left the company after 13. He has been there for the most of the time. In fact, he knows a lot about Versus, if not everything. So much so that he was sad that a lot of the characters he drew when got connected with ended up being scrapped. Apparently, he released some of the concept art that Square didn't show and, and he had some things that make Versus that much more compelling to, to dissect. You can find these arts online, but what caught my attention were some other concept arts that I don't think were made by Ferrari, but are still from Versus. For a starter, here is how Shiva originally looked like. I believe Roberto made another design for Shiva that he posted online, but I couldn't find it. Maybe Square got them deleted, I don't know. What's interesting that we can also see original design for Regalia as well. And this version has a fucking machine gun on it, so very cool. But I can see why it was removed. Really no need for that. Then again, we don't know what King was gonna do in Versus, so maybe Sid installed it for a reason. Another concept art shows Shiva being killed by Reapers. Obviously this is very early versus art, back when they were guardians and not gods. As to why Shiva is killed by reapers? Well, let's look at the next art and maybe it will shed some light. Here we can see Odin fighting against Bahamut. And this is very, very interesting considering the fact Odin was not in Final Fantasy XV. Or was he? A lot of people might not know, but Odin was found mentioned in Files of Final Fantasy XV. Not only that, but the amount of artwork for Final Fantasy XV that shows summons includes Odin. Not to mention it also has Doomstray. Now keep in mind this was in 2015. The game story at this point wasn't as far off from original concept. And Tabata himself has stated that the summons are not gods when asked that question, but the guardian. And this fact is still to this day screaming in the final game. The decision to change the song's backstory along with the rest of the plot happened in late 2015 and early 2016. That's right, the plot for the game changed for some unknown reason when it was already getting ready to be released later that year. So yeah, Odin was gonna be a part of all of this. Originally there were more songs, and if the story of Pedios is sent to go off of, again, Tabana mentioned back in 2015 that it was gonna be important dungeon to the story of the game, then Ifrit was gonna be somewhat of a tragic hero who tried to save Eos from hell. Now back to this picture with Odin and Bahamut. What you can notice is how Bahamut still looks like a normal dragon compared to the final game. And this brings us to the one interesting aspect about this concept art that can relate to story of verses. Again, this is not confirmed, but a lot of things point at this. It's theorized that Samus used to be guardians of different nations. And since Niflheim conquered them all, they were under their control, which explains the art from before where Reapers are killing Shiva. And if that's the case, why does Bahamut fight Odin? Well, here's where it gets interesting. Odin most likely was a guardian of Lucius' household. And again, if you look at early Lucian emblems that Nomura was going with, you can see how it resembles Odin. That added to the fact that there were gonna be reapers protecting Insomnia from invasion, along with the fact that Odin looks like he's made of bones, kind of pushes this theory forward. Again, none of this is confirmed, so we can't know for sure. But just know, this all lines up perfectly. And to support this theory, if you look at the emblem of Niflheim, what do you see? That's right, two dragons, like Bahamut. Another very interesting thing about this art is how the sky is red and the reapers are flying a ball. Red sky, now where have I seen this before? Speaking of reapers though, it is possible that the Reapers are the ones who gave Lucians their ring, as depicted in the screenshot. This was found in the game's data and for a long time was thought to be deleted, but if you look closely near Citadel, you can actually find the same picture in one of the pillars. So yeah, it's still in the game. Again, the whole Reapers and worshipping Goddess of Death was dropped because of China. But you can still see how this team, although a bit censored, is still present in the final game. Not to mention Odin fighting against Bahamut is most likely what evolved into final battle from Kingsland. As for Reapers? Well, there are statues of old kings that protect the city and can come to life. So you can see how that concept evolved and is still alive in a way too. Though not as cool as Nomura's original idea. And would you look at that, there are reaper like things in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Watchmen of Fate? I wonder, I wonder what this all can be about, hmm. So yeah, aside from this, another thing data miners found that I think can relate to Yozora 
is related to Ravus Nox Floret. Apparently, Ravus' original name was Lupus, and if one of the rumors is anything to go off of, then Lupus was Nomura's favorite character. But let's look at one aspect of Ravus that's similar to Yozora, his eyes. Ravus also has a heterochromia, and if that rumor is true, then maybe Yozora is a mix of Noctis and Ravus. As far as Ravis goes, apparently he was morphed with another general from Niflheim. As far as other rumors go, most of it is fake. Or something somebody came up with that just happened to happen in Kingdom Hearts 3. Regarding the rumors, uh, there was a whole thing about Noctis being an Antichrist. Yeah, that, that, yeah th 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 there was stuff like that. There was also the whole drug thing. Y you, you know the one I'm talking about. You used to take some drug called Luna and... And that's how we would talk to Stella. Yeah, yeah. It's that level of internet edge, yeah. Just goes on to show how people don't understand Nomura's artistic decisions and the way Nomura goes about the edge. There was also another one that was about Edge being a slut and having kids with random humans, then leaving the humanity to escape and Arden was banished or something. Ugh. Yeah, it's that levels of stupid. Obviously none of these leaks mention the Ring of Lucii, the Reapers, visualizing the problems we have today in the real world. It's not hard to guess which one of these people didn't read any normal interviews regarding Versus. Aside of this, there are a lot of developers who came out on Reddit or their blogs to talk about the game, but that already revolves around 15 so I'm gonna stop here. Funny enough, we got some more info about Versus in 2019. First was the main level designer who actually broke out of myth that it was Nomura's fault that the game was cancelled. He mentions how Nomura is not as slow at working as people say. In fact, it's incredibly fast. He even mentions how he was able to figure out a level design problem the team was struggling with for a week in a span of 5 minutes. According to him, Reason vs was cancelled due to the circumstances out of Nomura's control. And we can see how. But this won't be the last time we hear about Versus 13 in 2019. During the CDMT livestream that showed Noctis vs. outfit added in as a paid skin DLC, Koji Raka says that it's Noctis' outfit from vs. 13. To which Nomura is surprised and says, wait, we're allowed to say that name? Koji Raka then says, yeah, it's okay. Then Nomura says, because before we couldn't, which basically confirms that Nomura was not allowed to talk about Versus. Something we knew thanks to Hajime Tabata when he said that Square has no plans to release any more Versus information. And I feel like this is a good place to stop. I can go on. I can cover next hour just talking about Final Fantasy XV and its changes under Tabata. But I feel like I did good enough summary of events that led to Versus 13 being in development hell. I hope you have a better grasp of what was happening at the time and have a better understanding that it wasn't all Nomura's fault that everything went to pot. Obviously, you can no longer use a lot of concepts and verses that made in 15, or at the very least, not directly. But all the things that stayed behind, Reapers, the original vision for the game, all of that can be brought back in Kingdom Hearts, or in what I hope would be Verum Rex standalone game. And it's not like Verum Rex and Kingdom Hearts sharing a universe to some extent would be a bad thing. A lot of people like to point out how he won't be allowed to use Reapers and other aspects of Versus because Disney won't allow him. But here's the thing, if Vermeer's can become its own thing, then he can very well use those as long as it doesn't have Disney name on it. And uh, when Yozo would be with Sora, he can just not kill people. I mean Final Fantasy characters are the same. Just because they don't kill in Kingdom Hearts doesn't mean they don't kill in their games. And if it's gonna be in Kingdom Hearts, I mean we already saw a Heartless that's supposed to be a Reaper in Kingdom Hearts. So yeah, there's that. You can do it in that way. So yeah, this is more or less the story behind Versus 13. I didn't mention some details about the gameplay and such, mostly because that's not what I wanted to talk about. But if you want to find out about it yourself, just google it. All the interviews are on the internet. It's not really hard to find. And with that, I would call part 2 of this discussion complete. And I'll see you in part 3.